interview with Inside Olympia, and uh, don't don't take it personally or anything, but I think you probably said more during that interview than we've heard since you've been here in the past year. And so we'd like to hear more from you. We appreciate hearing your points of view and and just want you to talk some more. So okay, because I was asking directly to Kayla if I could have a CV. And I, I no, but I asked the board for it before and, and they gave me back a blank sheet of paper, okay? So, so um, I'd like to see it. Could you agree now publicly so I can have a receipt? Mike, Mike, hold on. Let's finish the meeting. So if, okay, but I have a press paper came to please. Mike. Mr. King, I need you to, to stop talking. We're trying to carry on the meeting. Like, yeah, they don't even care. Mr. Saad, you too, please. Okay. We were quiet for you we all to talk. Here. We had we, transparency. We've done everything we can to accommodate you today. So please just let others talk. We wouldn't be here if you had transparency. And I had that man. You need, need to stop. Okay, good night. Good night. I'll see you soon. Make sure that Chandra gets her uh, tips from me over there, will you? No, David Postman, you need to stop. I will not tolerate you berating me nor anyone else for simply demanding the CV of your director. What are you hiding? That is the only question here. And don't you dare say you are doing everything you can to accommodate us when you've now cut the public participation time by 25%. You're lying again. In fact, I know when you're lying because your lips are moving. And I'll see you on Wednesday, buddy. All right, folks, you're not going to believe this one, or maybe you will. Unfortunately, uh, today I asked Bill Lukela for his CV and I shook his hand and he said, oh, uh, go through the proper channels. But isn't a public records request already the proper channel ipso facto? And I got, you know, an ink spot back from them. Yeah, look at it right there. Nothing. So they've got or allegedly got with these licenses all that, that, that gap of 12 years while an elite bunch of largely white people clocked all those dollars all right okay stand by we're gonna let christopher go ahead okay well all right then let me test those extemporaneous skills i learned a long time ago uh well guys listen i want to pick up way back with the beginning of this because co-op 138 they're my neighbors we live in skagit like literally when i go out run my dog and skateboard i go right past their house so there's, there's no such thing. Move it over so I can get you the camera. Thanks. Oh, yeah, guys. So those those, those guys are my neighbors. And, you know, I, I go outside my house. Uh, I, I run my dog and my skateboard and everything, I, and I pass their house. So there's no such thing as a coincidence here and why I'm here. I'm like the only person who comes up here who has no horse in this race. I'm, I don't, I'm not vested in any cannabis entity other than the fact that they're my friends. And I'm a diligent journalist ex-government lawyer, civil rights lawyer, advocate. That's the only reason I'm here is for justice, period. And I'm not seeing it over here. I saw all the documents. Michael's not lying. They're a legit cooperative. And the way they got shut down in Skagit, there's also hidden, there was hidden video from a court hearing where their lawyer, Rod Moody, stole $3,000 from them, lied about it in their lawsuit. I saw the canceled check. He never had to cover that, right? And then they dismissed the case with, a, you know, one of these, uh, pro tem ju jurist that walks in, you know, to cover up the dirt. And these guys are just stuck. And I'm saying this, this can't be right. But that's what we're living under. Anyway, there's so much about that case I could tell you I can't right now. But that that file was found in the dead prosecutor's office after he left office. He was, he, uh, I forget his name, but he died, not Weirich's guys, he, he died in a car crash. He crashed his MG, he got killed. Anyway, they found it in his desk years later. So, God, now half my time is gone. Listen. What I want to talk about now, the lack of transparency, the way the board goes after a black and brown, you know, Cantana Fest, led by a black and brown. You, you've you seen my picture with Redman. I've been talking with those guys about things. And, and also um, uh, Amira, person of color, and the way that the board went after them. I saw the hidden emails that come out that said, oh, unfortunately, we can't shut it down. Why are you trying to shut it down? Why can't you help promote it? And, and then there was a, a some other... Uh, accusation of, of impropriety, a quid pro quo that was in there uh, from somebody who sent a text message from somebody else, another producer processor. It was never documented, but yet they're on high alert trying to shut this thing down, running Cantana Fest all over town. It was ridiculous. But anyway, I just want to tell you guys, if any time, if ever in the future there's an audit conducted or has been conducted of you, it's going to show that this agency is completely biased. And that's how we can get results like this. You know, with Chandra Wax. Christopher, you have 30 seconds. With Chandra Wax hiring Kim Potter, the manslaughterer of Dante Wright. Okay? That's how you get there. So since 
LCB, we know that they gave out licenses unequally during 502. So since LCB injected race into this equation on multiple occasions, there's a legitimate reason now under strict scrutiny test to use race as a factor in going forward. That's what we learned in law school. That's what I did as a practicing attorney. That's what I'm doing as a citizen right now, explaining the law so that legislators can do the right thing. And if I could have my friend hand these out, please. Christopher, uh, that's your time. Yeah, if I just, I'm just concluding now. I want to mention that on transparency, I've asked for Director Lucayla's CV about a thousand times, and uh, I never got it. So I don't understand that. Yeah, I understand that. But can I just get the CV from Director Lucayla? I mean, like he's a director of an agency. Let's can give, I? Let's give Mike side. I, I understand all that. I've been accommodating, accommodating. I just want to get the CV. I mean, is, is that like a Stop talking now? Your time is up. <sighs> Mike Asai is waiting to talk. I understand that. I'm just wanting to see the CV. I'm, I'm sorry. I asked for something completely ridiculous. Uh, my, I, my, apologies. my apologies. My apologies. 2019. Nobody listened to us. I just want the CV of the director. I'm sorry. That's all. But he beat the world and then became a song. Mike, can you hear us? Okay, seven minutes enough. Thank you. If they watch your hearing, they will see you. Mr. Sack? Can I get your CV? Say what? Can I get your CV? Right. Go through the channels. Oh, I see it here. Okay, no, no, no. I'm this on video. No, no, no. Oh, but that would be his computer. Okay. Yeah. What is, well, what, just a second. I know how to. Okay, guys, I was asking Director Lucayla. If I could have a CV, and I, I no, but I asked the board for it before, right, and, and they gave me back a blank sheet of paper. Okay, so, so um, I'd like to see it. You, could you agree now publicly so I can have? A Mike, Mike, hold on. Let's finish the meeting. But if, okay, but I have Christopher King, King to please, Mr. King. I need you to, to stop talking. We're trying to I carry on the meeting. They don't even care. Mr. We Saad, you too, okay. please. Sure. We were quiet for you when all to talk. Here, we had we, transparency. We've done everything we can to accommodate you today. So please just. Let others talk. We wouldn't be here if you had transparency, and I had that man. You need to, to stop. Okay, good night. Good night. I'll see you soon. Make sure that Chandra gets her uh, tips from me over there, will you? Mr. Asai, we've got you connected through the phone now, I believe, and unmuted at our end. Do you want to try? Uh, yes. Am I clear now? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your patience. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Uh, this is Mike Asai, Vice President of Black Aces of Cannabis, uh, fighting for inclusion. Uh, I am the co-founder of Emerald City Collective, also known as Emerald City Collective Gardens, first downtown Seattle Medical Dispensary 2010, unjustly shut down. Uh, as I said before, I, you know, the time uh, should be to four minutes. Um, not happy about that being reduced to three minutes. In regards to the 50-80 rulemaking, um, yeah, we want these licenses out, but as it stands today, the social equity program has been a failure. Uh, Black Excellence Cannabis has major complaints, but with those complaints, I want everyone to understand this, is that we have solutions, and we've had solutions, and we've provided solutions to the LCB over and over. This mobility hijacking by uh, a handful of licensees with low scores uh, is a complete disrespect. But the LCB created this because Chris Thompson kept lying about the mobility. Even Rebecca Smith acknowledged in January of 2021 that they were looking in, into the mobility part. But because of the current industry that has a hold on this industry, the current white establishment pushed back on that. And you guys didn't do it. 5080 got across the finish line. You guys should have did emergency rules. As soon as 5080 was signed by Governor Inslee on May 1st, 2023, establish emergency rules to make all license mobile. So now, with people having scores of 120 and 90 and 150, and those people that had higher scores didn't get a license, I just, it's an injustice to do that. For the program um, to continue in the way it's continuing with there's no money for 5080, we need money for the next round of licenses. This process should not be fast tracked, it should be moved very carefully to issue licenses in the coming year. Right now, as a set where there's no money, we need to go back to the legislators this coming session and get more money for the program moving forward. As we do move forward, as we right now, I 
believe I stand corrected as a sis, about maybe 38 or 39 licenses that still have not opened up throughout the state. What's it going to look like a year from now? With that being said, we need to understand there's 60 licenses now probably in the pot. We need to slow this process down and break this up and really look at what's going to be beneficial. LCB, you've been doing things, whether you've been helping or not helping. Mike, you have 30 seconds. Say, thank you. This is what I will say is where is the advocacy with the city of Seattle, the city of Renton, the city of Federal Way in Kent? LCB, your voice is needed to talk to these city council members, not just us as licensees or constituents. We need more help from you because this is your program at the end of the day. I will write more in that I have more to say. Uh, thank you um, for the patience and the time this morning. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Last Again, the conversation has been closed yeah. for some reason. Right. Um, about us African Americans who were, you know, in cannabis before the cannabis board existed from 2009 up until you know 2012 when they formed why did the conversation get closed the first couple of social equity meetings were about repairing and redressing and restoring the licenses for those african americans like me that uh, helped pave the way for what the cannabis market today welcome to seattle